I went for the middle grades just because, you know, split the difference. So let's just take a couple minutes and just look through them. Okay. So if you take a look, grade six, oops, I did a math one. Ratios and proportional relationships, just move across there. Always look to the middle first. So these are our teaching spaces. Identifying a model of a given simple ratio. Okay. A more complex space would be generating the model. The less complex space would be identifying a model of one to one. If this is never a concept you've ever touched before, it gives you guidance that we need to start touching on this concept. Other question comes up, what about the academic language of ratio? Student may or may not know the academic language. I would always try to, I feel like, drop the language every once in a while. I would use the word ratio. Your student is probably not going to know the academic language, at least up front. But conceptually, can we understand the idea of one to one? So then take a look. Read closely. Just take a minute and go through. They're organized the exact same. So you will always have this continuum presented in the documents. And then next, you'll have the more complex task, then the intermediate, and then the less complex task. So it follows along the spectrum. So you can read through each one of these. So the more complex task for sixth graders, it's set up. How am I going to measure a student's ability to generate a ratio? So it tells you what's required. Okay. And then it tells you the may. So if I read through this, every performance task must have at least five items. That's a given. Tasks must include five items that are based on a model, five items that are based on a real world situation, or a combination of both. Okay. So I can have a model, I can have a real world situation, women to men in a room, children to adults, things of that nature, or I can have a model up here. School supplies to measurement instruments. So I have multiple ways of figuring this out. And then I have examples to help guide my work. Okay. Teacher direction, literally, here are some shapes. Point to the shapes. You probably would be pointing to the shapes anyway. But what is the ratio of squares to triangles? You can give student a ratio template if you wanted to. Okay. If we had square manipulatives, if we had, it doesn't have to be shapes. It could be a very different things. Another way to do this would be there are five students at a table. There are three girls and two boys. Here are some number cards. Use the numbers to write the ratio of girls to boys. Okay. This would be a more complex task for a sixth grader. Okay. Then you see an intermediate level task okay, as you go through here. Okay. There's a setup, like a lead-in. When you talk about this setup, something you might change quite a bit. James needs one pencil for every two pieces of paper. Your students may be used to story problems a little bit, and that might be something OK. But if not, I always used to put my students into any sort of problem. I need this, you need this, we need this. OK, the ratio of pencils to papers is one pencil to two pieces of paper. This is written out as one to two. OK, so there's a lot of guidance here for the student, one to two. Which one shows that? OK, I could use it here on paper. If paper and pencils are a great idea, fantastic. I would probably actually be using manipulatives. If pencils and paper are a terrible idea, find something that's a good idea that works for your students. Okay. Here's a second way. Which shows a ratio of squares to triangles as two to three? You have it set up multiple choice. Is it A? Again, don't read out two to three. That's going to give it away pretty easily. Which one shows that? I have them lined up here. Is it this one, this one, or this one? Switch out. Which one shows a ratio of three to two? Switching it up is always really hard. Switching it up two to three, three to two, that is always really difficult, I think, for our students. Okay. And then the most initial. Student will identify a model that represents one to one. If you notice, as soon as you drop to the most initial level, multiple choice questions become two options. They need to be probable. You can't have a piece of broccoli in here, right? We want students to focus on math. But okay, I have one pencil on paper, and I have three pencils on one piece of paper. Which one is one to one? Okay, I'm learning about a ratio of one to one. Yeah. And there's a pretty robust example down here. Teacher direction. Collect paper, plates, and spoons. 
I mean, they're very clear directions, and you can use them or not use them as you would see fit. Place the paper plates in front of the student from left to right. Here are three paper plates. Point to the paper plates. Place the spoons in a group in front of the student. Here are three spoons. Place one spoon on each paper plate. It shows you how to do that. Is that a ratio of one to one? Yes. Could we work with that? Okay. It calls it out for you. You don't have to sort that out. And the way it calls that out for you will get a valid measure of this. This. And okay, so we're using validity in its correct way here. Valid means accurate. It will get you an accurate measure of this standard. Okay. So one other thing I'm going to call out, and then we'll take a short break, is I did this one for you in terms of like I called it out a little bit more, and you'll see this at the very end of the presentation. So it's a grade four one, a geometry one, an initial level, which is, again, student will differentiate between straight lines and curved lines. I bet we draw the requirements, the one that's unique that says task must include at least one item identifying a straight line and one identifying and excuse me, and one item identifying a curved line. Okay? So, example one, I would imagine I could think of different ways this would work with my student. If a student was visual and we knew how to work on paper, I could draw two lines. Leslie, which one's the straight one? Leslie, which one's the curvy one? Give another set of lines. Or a board. If my student had a tablet and I had the like paint program, I could do that too. For many of my students with low vision, dried Elmer's glue was like my best friend. I could draw it out that way. I could guide a student's hand through a sandbox, if you've ever done that, of am I making a straight line or am I making a curvy line? So there's a lot of different ways that I can get that measure. The other way to do it is another nice way. So what they're looking at is which object has only straight lines? Imagine this is beautifully rounded. And which one has straight lines and curvy lines? Okay. And you could do this with objects that are naturally occurring. I'm staring at things on desks or with manipulatives. Okay. And I would have a set of different objects. I would have five options here. Can you tell me which one is only <laughs> straight lines? For students changing size, generalizing is really difficult. Are these all still straight lines even if it is half the size? So those are ways that I would do that. Restrictions are none. So hopefully, you know how we talked about those dovetailing? So this is the part where I think about the administration, how we're working with the kids.